Ubiquity, the history of designs we take for granted. Created by Chris Whitwood. There are few designs that have saved quite so many lives as the three-point seatbelt. Fitted as standard to almost every car in the world, these devices are nearly as effective as they are commonplace. They are easy to fasten and keep vehicle occupants secure without a sense of being restricted. Enforced by law and reinforced by cultural norms, wearing a seatbelt is, for the vast majority of drivers and passengers, habitual. Yet the story of its creation is one of tragedy, remarkable generosity and simple, effective design. The history of the seatbelt begins not on the road, but in the skies. One of the earliest examples was invented half a century before the Wright brothers took flight by the Yorkshire-born father of aviation, George Cayley, for use on a fixed-wing glider that he described as a governable parachute. However, it was not until the advent of powered aircraft that the value of seatbelts came to the fore. After interviewing the survivor of an aeroplane crash in 1915, the pioneering designer and manufacturer, Glenn H. Curtis, recognised that unsecured pilots being ejected while in flight was less than desirable. Safety harnesses were increasingly employed during the First World War, and by the 1920s, seatbelts began to appear in civilian aircraft. Down below, auto mechanics had also started attaching straps to seats. The rise in the number of cars, coupled with vehicles becoming faster, meant that by the middle of the 20th century, crashes had become more frequent and more severe. Sweden's national energy company, Vattenfall, kept statistics of work-related accidents. Between 1953 and 1954, there was a sharp increase in employee injuries and deaths, the majority of which occurred while on the road. For a company which had 1,500 company cars and over 15,000 employees who owned personal vehicles, this statistic was an alarming problem. Vattenfall began an intense period of research. In addition to examining statistics and evidence from traffic collisions, crash tests were carried out, including using a crane to drop cars containing dummies from a great height and photographing the impact with high-speed cameras. Most early seatbelts were two-point designs, one of the most common being the lap belt. These types, which are still common on aircraft and coaches, secure the wearer's pelvis. This prevents them from being launched through the windscreen in the event of a crash. However, research by Vattenfall and others found lap belts were also linked with head, chest and spinal injuries. When a car came to an abrupt halt, the belts held the passenger's lower body in place, but because the pelvis is hinged, the upper body was thrown forward. The result was strain on the back which could cause lumbar fractures and potentially catastrophic injuries from the head and torso striking the steering wheel or dashboard. The increased risk of fatality for front seat occupants had been known for a while. A 1950 edition of the American magazine Popular Science referred to the front passenger seat as the death seat. Several manufacturers had even explored the idea of rear-facing passenger seats, as seen in some Ford station wagons, and taken to science fiction extremes by the backwards-driven Spectrum Pursuit vehicle in the television series Captain Scarlet. Vattenfall's more down-to-earth solution was the sash belt, or shoulder harness. This went diagonally across the body from shoulder to hip. Shortly after, the Vattenfall seatbelt was adopted by Volvo, with certain models being fitted with the feature as standard. Volvo was already regarded as a safety-conscious manufacturer, having played a role in a number of other innovations, included padded dashboards, roll bars, and collapsible steering columns that would crumple in the event of a collision rather than risk impaling the driver. While the Vattenfall seatbelt was an improvement on earlier designs, it still had its drawbacks. The shoulder harness prevented the upper body lurching forwards, but if worn without an additional lap belt, the occupant's lower body was liable to move forward instead, causing them to submarine, or slide under the seatbelt. One of the most fundamental flaws, however, was the positioning of the belt buckle. This was placed centrally, at about the height of the ribcage, meaning they were as likely to cause damage to soft internal organs as to protect them. Volvo's CEO, Gunnar Engelau, recognised a solution was urgently required. 
Engelau's motivation came at least in part from a personal tragedy. One of his family members had been killed in a car accident, their death being caused to an extent by the deficiencies in the two-point harness they had been wearing. Engelau turned to Niels Bolin. Previously an aircraft engineer, Bolin had been involved in developing ejector seats for Saab jet fighters. He saw that though the situations were very different, the forces experienced by ejecting pilots and drivers involved in a collision had certain similarities. Building on research by Vattenfall and studies in other parts of the world, combined with his own experience in the aviation industry, Bolin set about finding a solution that was, as he described it, simple, effective and could be put on conveniently with one hand. Within a year, Bolin had developed a safety belt that combined elements of the lap belt and the shoulder harness. The three-point safety belt, as the name suggests, anchors the wearer at three points, at one shoulder and on both sides of the pelvis. The top section of the belt prevents the upper body being thrown forward, while the lower part prevents the wearer sliding down. Crucially, the buckle was placed to the side, largely eliminating the chance of injury to internal organs. Early versions required the wearer to draw the strap tight manually, similar to airline lap belts. However, the 1960s saw the introduction of retracting roller belts. These included inertia locks, meaning that if drawn out slowly, such as when a seatbelt is being fastened, the roller unwinds. However, a sudden, rapid pull on the belt, as might be experienced in an emergency braking manoeuvre or during a crash, the belt locks and the wearer is held in place. While seatbelt evolution in the name of safety continues, for over 60 years, Bolin's core design has remained relatively unchanged. The results from early tests were undeniable. For Engelau, the increase in safety that the three-point seatbelt provided was so significant that despite the investment in research and development, Volvo immediately made the patent freely available for all. This remarkable act of generosity spurred on its mass adoption. Manufacturers may have been quick to realise the importance of Bolin's design, but members of the public took more convincing before they would buckle up. Flaws in previous seatbelt concepts, particularly injuries associated with two-point harnesses, had led to scepticism and misconceptions. Some commentators argued that seatbelts were a new danger and the sense of security they provided would encourage careless driving, whereas others believed seatbelts would be restrictive and hinder rescue in the event of an accident. This view wasn't limited to road drivers either. In Formula One, which at the time was one of the deadliest sports on the planet, many drivers preferred to risk being thrown from the car than be trapped in a burning wreck. Nevertheless, the statistics were clear. In 1967, a study published by Bowling covering 28,000 traffic accidents highlighted that occupants who had not worn seatbelts sustained fatal injuries throughout the full range of speeds. By contrast, of the 37,511 people involved in accidents while wearing a three-point seatbelt, not one died unless travelling faster than 60 miles per hour. In the decades that followed it being gifted by Volvo to the world, governments across the globe have passed laws mandating the use of seatbelts. Media campaigns continue to highlight their importance, and wearing them has become just a ubiquitous fact of life. In the 60 years since its creation, Bolin's simple, effective and convenient design is estimated to have saved over one million lives. As a result, the three-point seatbelt is widely regarded as one of the most important innovations in road safety. Thank you for listening to Ubiquity, the history of designs we take for granted. Please like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow the series on social media using the handle ubiquity underscore pod on Twitter and Instagram, or search Ubiquity Podcast on Facebook. All episodes will be available on YouTube. Please leave a like and a comment, as I'd love to hear your feedback and your ideas for future episodes. If you want to support the podcast financially, or just say thank you, please visit the Ubiquity Podcast Patreon at patreon.com forward slash ubiquity underscore pod. Patrons will also gain access to all of the scripts as episodes are released, 
and we'll be able to vote on subjects for episodes in upcoming series. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you once again for listening.